Let's open with prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for showing us your love and for the opportunity to love one another. To um, you've shown us this amazing love that you've given us in your Son, and and we know that the love that we have, uh, either for you or for one another, can never measure up to that. And yet, uh, you you set that standard, knowing that we can't meet that standard, uh, but we rejoice that mm-hmm. you do meet that standard, and and you have done so for us, and you continue to do so. And, uh, and part of that is to forgive us, and so we thank you for that as well. We pray that you be with us as we study your word, and help us to grow in faith and to um, and to trust in you for everything. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay. So we are on First John chapter two, verse seven, seven through fourteen. The next section where. Um, um, the bottom of page four in the study guide. Bottom of page four? Oh. Mm-hmm. Well, I told you people three. I apologize. Information <coughs> well, how did I get that? I can't count on you to cheat. No, you can't. <laughs> Better wow. not. You Better the, not. You the wrong answers. Two. You'll get no bells done. <laughs> <laughs> So, First John 2, uh, verses 7 through 14. Does somebody like to read? I'll read. Jesus said to the servants, Fill the jars with water, so they fill mm. them to the brim. Then oh, no, he told them. No, no, no. Not the first Gospel of John. But oh, First John. John. I'm in John. Yeah. Very common mistake. Oh, sorry about that. No problem. That's back, right? Yeah. Way back. <laughs> Come on, I know it's one of those little After ones. After First back Peter. There. After First Peter? Mm-hmm. Oh, before Revelation, I think. Yep. All right, let's try that Peter. again. Dear friends, I am not writing you a new command, but an old one, which you have had since the beginning. This old command is the message you have heard. Yet I am writing you a new command. It's true is seen in him and you because the darkness is passing and the true light is already shining. Anyone who claims to be in the light but hates his brother is still in the darkness. Whoever loves his brother lives in the light and there is nothing in him to make him stumble. But whoever hates his brother is in the darkness and walks around in the darkness. He does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded him. I write to you, dear children, because your sins have been forgiven on account of his name. I write to you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. I wrote to you, young men, because you have overcome the evil one. I write to you, dear children, because you have known the Father. I write to you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you are strong. And the word of God lives in you, and you have overcome the evil one. <laughs> right. So, um, how is the command to love new? Hmm. Because it's to love one another, other Christians. Okay. All right. But what you're supposed to, you know, love your neighbor as yourself. That was that's Old Testament. Jesus reiterated, but that was already out there. Well, I have a question. Yeah. Oh, never mind. I see how. Okay, nothing. I misunderstood. Thirty-seven. Pardon? Thirty-seven. Is that the answer? Number thirty-seven. Yeah, that's the answer to your question. Okay. <laughs> I just misread. I am writing you no new commandment. Yeah, I get it. I don't know. I, I, I was like Denise. I kind of went back to the Gospel of John. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. So how is it new? Because it refers to Christ. Yeah. 
and across. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, it's, it's it says it's truth is seen in him and you. Yeah. It's it's all about perspective. It's one thing to, to love each other and try to help each other out and you know, even just the concept of love your neighbor as yourself. But Jesus showed us really what it means to love your neighbor as yourself. You know, not only through various parables and things like that, um, the uh, in fact uh, the parable of the Good Samaritan is a great example of love your neighbor as yourself. And then what we really learn from the parable of the Good Samaritan is how we don't love our neighbor as ourselves. But Jesus did. He loved us. And so um, so we love each other in the context and understanding that um, that we we don't love each other as we could. But um, in that forgiveness, <coughs> the, the love that he's shown to us, that's the love. Not just affection, not even just self-sacrifice, but, but looking at Jesus, this is the love that I want to bring to you. Not only my um, my my self-sacrifice for you, but I want to bring you Jesus. And um, and let in both word and deed, let that love um, be shown to you. Right. Um. So, what is the true light? Verse 8, it says, because um, the darkness is passing and the true light is already shining. Does it be like Christ, I guess? The Christ. Yeah, yeah. Christ is the light, the, the gospel, uh, the truth that, uh, that offends so many people. This is the one. All right. Our hate and love primarily emotions or actions. Anyone who claims to be in the light but hates his brother is still in darkness. Whoever loves his brother lives in the light. There's nothing in him to make him stumble. I put both with a question mark after it. Okay. Um, I also it says walketh, so that there is a. Um, and this walk up in the light. I I see it as an action as well as an emotion. It's what we do with what we have with that love. Okay. And usually would start, I would think, with the emotion end of it first, because what's in your mind then carries out into your actions too. I would think. So if it fits in your mind already to be self-sacrificing, or hey, you know, I I need to set that same example that Christ did and, and use my life as an example as terrible and poor as it is of trying to emulate the real thing but you know <coughs> it draws me to an article I read in a paper years and years ago I was probably still in high school so sorry for a long time ago but, <laughs> but it was about a, a, a star running back in the NFL and it was during off season and I guess he was at a summer camp and there was a young child was drowning in a lake at a resort and he dove in and he saved the child, but he drowned. Oh. And yeah. and they label that thing on, on high. And he was a very popular NFL player. I mean, I can't think of the fellow's name I right now. I remember that. I can't think of the names either, but, but I remember that. But, uh, it, and I thought, you know, it goes back to that other uh, line that Jesus had, that, you know, no greater love has a man than that, that he would lay down his own life for his brother. Or, I mean, again, I'm not verbatim, but, I mean, it just really, for that man to just, had that kind of compassion and just knew that he had to do something or that child was going to die even at the expense of his own life. It was very moving. I mean, I just, I thought to myself, like, he laid it all out, mm -hmm. you know, and you, you, and I guess you find out later what kind of person he was. I mean, he was, he was a Christian. He was brought up, you know, in a church and, and I'm sure that he trusted his Lord and he knew where he was going even if he wasn't going to make it and I know he must have done that knowing that. So again, I just thought, wow, you know, that's really, really something. So, yeah, yeah, you know, love can have an emotional aspect to it, but um, but love is primarily an action. You know, and I always use the example when Jesus was hanging on the cross. Certainly, he was feeling compassion for us um, and pity and, and all kinds of things. But you know, the sort of the sort of ooey gooey feeling. 
um, that so many couples feel when they're first dating and, and things like that. And you know, he makes me feel all giddy inside and, and all this sort of stuff. You know, that is not love. That's affection. That's um, oftentimes lust. That is. Um, that it's all kinds of other things. But all of those things are, are usually, you know, those are just actions of your glands. <laughs> um, you know, a little bit of dopamine in the brain and <laughs> you're happy as a clam. Okay. Um, but but that's not gonna that's not not gonna move you to sacrifice your life for somebody. Right. Um, and and it's really it's just, it's just something you feel. And the problem is is that a lot of people think that love is an emotion. And they hear them say, well, I got divorced because I have a lot of love. What do you mean? Mm. You know, and it, what it means is that emotion went away. Well, there was a study done not too long ago and they found that only 10% of people um, uh, long term are even capable, physically capable, based on their body chemistry, of still getting that that giddy feeling from the person that they're married to over it's time. Too bad. And um, don't believe a word of it, Pastor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you. Well, that's that was the. The statistic that was given. So Are you and Larry in the ten percent? You can't believe everything. Really? Giddy? <laughs> 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 what? Wow. But don't ask. You probably <laughs> you wouldn't agree, that. agree with that. Huh? <laughs> this, this is going out on the public airways. Let's just <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> talk off air. <laughs> but, um, you know, I there was one time I was um, I was working at McDonald's and the, one of the managers says. <coughs> Thinking about divorcing my husband. They have like a three-year-old daughter too. And <coughs> <coughs> oh, no reason. Oh, what? Oh, jeez. Oh, what? <laughs> what? Uh, <laughs> uh, it's just you know the the spark is gone. It's just. Like, well, do you? I mean, do you guys fight a lot? No, we get along pretty good. You know. <laughs> You know, it, it was like everything was fine, but the excitement was gone, you know? Mm -hmm. And and so, oh, so just throw the whole thing away and leave the kid without, you know, a cohesive family and, and everything. And I thought, wow. Mm -hmm. All right. There is a misunderstanding of what love is all about. Mm -hmm. right? Love is all about saying, all right, I'm going to stick by you no matter what. And I always tell couples when I'm doing premarital counseling. That, um, that when you enter into a marriage, if you have problems, you have two options. You can either get help or otherwise find a way to work out those problems and take care of them, or else you can live the rest of your lives miserable together. <laughs> there is no third option. I highly recommend the first one, <laughs> all right? <laughs> but you can't go into it with the thought of a third option. Mm -hmm. Divorce is not a third option. You can't, you know, and and yeah, it's sad when when one person is not on board with that, and um, and all of a sudden you find out, you know, it's, you know they sort of opted for the third option that really should be there, mm -hmm. and um, and our society's got <coughs> so easy, um, but you know, it's still painful and it's still. Um, still be a headache, but it's, you know, legislation has made it a lot easier than it used to be, and, that, and nowadays, it, it's easier to get a divorce than it is to, um, to get the counseling and stuff like that, just from a legal standpoint, and, um, I think a lot of, a lot of the younger people today don't take the vows seriously. I mean, they save the vows, but they don't really, it right. really doesn't stick, you know, yeah. it, it, I mean, they don't, it's not inside of them. Yeah, yeah, no. You know, they just it just words, words to them. Uh, I was listening to uh, I don't remember what it was, but they said, yeah, you know, when people say for better or worse, they mean for better. 
Yeah, because if you think about it, there are lots of worse things. Speak right. for yourself, Anne Marie. Well, I think a lot less people have faith nowadays, too. Our younger people, they don't yeah. have that right. that bond with God to where marriage is a sacrament or you know, you're united as one. That's gone. That's mm -hmm. not there. Yeah, like it's, it. it's all about what am I getting out of it? Does it make me happy? And if I'm not happy, then I should, you know, forget it. What's the point? And I'm mm -hmm. going to get out of it and, and try to find happiness elsewhere. Now, ironically, um, they've also, speaking of studies, they've um, done studies on people that have divorced and, and years later, and they say, you know, are you happy now that you're divorced? Um, now that all is said and done, and um, you've had some time in that. And um, <coughs> overwhelmingly, it's, no, I'm not. Okay, so you weren't happy before, but you were at least married. <laughs> now, you're not happy, and you don't have the marriage anymore. Whereas if you'd stayed in the marriage and, and gotten counseling or, or whatever you needed to do to fix it, then you'd be happy, and you'd still be married. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you opt for the easy way out, and um, and you don't get what you're looking for. Of course, the other thing is a lot of couples, I, you know, I've, I've heard people say, well, you know, I'm not happy. Doesn't God want me to be happy? No! <laughs> <laughs> right? That is not God's goal for you, is that you have happiness in this life. Now, if you do, great. You know, and it's not that he doesn't want you to be happy. All right? But that's not his goal for you. His goal for you is not that today you're happy. Right? His goal for you is that you have abiding peace. That you have, you know, a full life, not in the sense of you did lots of cool and amazing things, but um, but you lived a life filled with love and, um, and you know, that, that your life was uh, um, was connected with, with Christ. Aren't we supposed to live our life for him? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and it's not and that we all do that all the time, but I mean, <laughs> that's what we're supposed to do. Right, right. And, and you know, and we don't. But but that's the whole thing. Is that's the beauty of the gospel is that that we don't. But it's it's living a life under the cross, living a life of God has forgiven me, and so I'm gonna live as as His creature. I'm gonna live as as His child. And um, I'm, you know, I'm certainly going to strive for that, knowing that I'm going to fail over and over again. Mm -hmm. That's still my goal, and um, and I know that He forgives me, and that's what keeps motivating me to do more. Is because He forgives me, because He loves me, because He's so done so much for me and forgiven so much. How can I do any less than everything for Him? And um, but yeah, we're still sinners. So we don't love. I mean, this the love that that John presents in these epistles <laughs> is, you know, it's this this pure, true, real love. Um, and and it, it's it's love that our world doesn't know, doesn't understand. Um, and and yet John puts it out there and he says, all right, this is real love. This is the love that Christ has shown to you, and it is real. Agape. Agape. But and and really, to, you know, Jesus gave the the epitome of what that love is. It's a love beyond our ability to express, to 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 perform, um, to understand. But He lays it out there for us, and and, um, and He says, you know, whatever else, you know that this love is real. And. Um, let your lives be a reflection of that love, but um, but you're not going to. So just know that this love <laughs> is real. <laughs> um. So yeah, and, and and hatred too. Um. Now of course, remember Jesus also said that if you hate your brother, you committed murder. You know. So, um. But it's it's also important to understand. That hatred isn't isn't so much emo an emotion, but it's an act of the will. Sometimes it's a very easy act of the will. All right, but um, you know, I, I, I had somebody ask me one time. Um, 
happens to someone who's been raped. And she said, I know that I'm supposed to forgive, but every time I think about that person, I just I feel angry and, I, and, I, and hurt and, and, and all this stuff. And, and she says, and I don't know how to get rid of those emotions. And I said, hatred's not an emotion. Not, not the way the Bible sees it, right? Emotions are going to come to you. You know, St. Paul says, be angry but don't sin, right? That doesn't mean that, that the emotion itself is is a sinful emotion. It doesn't mean you have forgive. I said, you know, do you, do you want bad things to happen to this guy? No. But, you know, do you want him to know Jesus and, and be able to live forever with him? Well, yeah. I said, sounds to me like you've forgiven him. You're just still hurting. You know, it's it's one thing to to say, yeah, I forgive you. I I, I bear no ill will against you. I, I um, you know, I really hope somebody, not me, comes into your life and and is able to you know, to show you the love that I'm not capable of showing you because of this pain that um, that I still feel. Right? Um, but it's and you know, certainly. Jesus is able to say, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And, um, you know, and, and in turn, show that love to those who have hurt him so badly. Um, but we're not Jesus. <coughs> and, uh, and we still struggle with that. And, um, and so, so it's, it's not, it's not sinful Sorry. to feel pain. Right? And, and feeling pain doesn't mean that, um, that you are that you haven't forgiven that person. Um, and, and so, you know, that was, that was helpful for her, and I, I think that it's important for people to understand that, that both love and hate are things that you do, not so much people. No, I, oh, my wife, I love her, and, and, and when I say that, I mean, I, I feel, you know, affection toward her, and, and, um, and things like that. And, um, but, uh, and so it's, it's not that it's wrong to use the, the term that way. Um, but it's, there's, what John is presenting here is that love is so much more than that. And, and really, that, all that sort of emotional angle on it, that's really kind of secondary. That's, that's really, when you get right down to it, that's really not what love is. You can go ahead and use the term that way, you know, because it has the word has different um, different definitions, you know. But the love that he's talking about here, the love of Christ, it's not because I mean, really think about it. If, if Jesus says I love you and it just and it just means affection and that's it, what good does that do me? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, how does mm-hmm. abiding in the light show love to our brother? Whoever loves his brother lives in the light. There's nothing in him to make him stumble. I, I, I thought that it, the light causes us to love our brother. I don't know if that's the answer to that. That's he who loves his brother abides in the light. It almost seems to me that that's backwards, at least in the way my scripture is written here. Well, I think it goes both ways. Mm-hmm. We're able to love because we're in the light. Yeah. All right. But because we're in the light, we love. Yes. And um, so, yeah, it goes both ways. But, but being in the light of, of the gospel, that motivates us to love and to, to, to sacrifice and to, to give um, to those in need, to those who need our love, or to those that, that God brings into our lives. Alright, 
so um, what does John mean by cause for stumbling? And how can we avoid being a cause for stumbling to a brother? Um, also verse 10. There's nothing in him to make him stumble. Sin. Okay. Stumble, please. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ding. Star. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, when we, um, uh, I can never remember the mm-hmm. exact quote, but um, mm-hmm. one of Paul's epistles, he talks about um, the, the something to the effect of the Gentiles mock God because of you or something like that. But, um, but, you know, basically he's, he says, look, you know, don't give people that don't believe in Christ a reason not to. Say that again. Don't, don't, give. Give them, don't give the people that are not Christians a reason not to be Christian. Don't, uh, um, well, it's like a right. song that Kimberly and I both like the um, the mm-hmm. chorus is if you want to lead me to Jesus you got to find a better way because your life is speaking so loud I can't even hear a word you say. <laughs> right. um, you know, you know you've got like this uh, the I mean really good example the Westboro Baptist Church this group that goes around um, with the God hates fags signs oh, and, yeah. and they protest soldiers' funerals and all that mm. kind of stuff. Right. Gives Christianity a bad name. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. People see that and they say, why would I want to be a Christian if that's what mm. being a Christian is about? Mm. Well, it's not. It's a dozen people that somehow have a really big budget that they could be using for evangelism, mm-hmm. but instead are using it to throw things at people. You know? And um, that's not what they're doing is not Christian. <coughs> That's yeah. like this war, not to interrupt, I'm sorry, yeah, but sure. they, there's a war going on right now between the strip bar and the church. I guess they're across the street from each other. Oh, yeah, I heard about So that. the bar started, or no, wait a minute, I forgot which one started. Yeah, the bar started protesting in front of the church. <laughs> so then the church is like, okay, all right. So now they're protesting in front of the church. It's like, oh, come on. You know, I don't know if that's doing any good or not, you know. Mm-hmm. What are we saying? Two there? wrongs don't make a right. Exactly. Mm-hmm. What are yeah. we saying there? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now, now I'll give you a, a contrasting example. All right, um, there was a, a while back. I can't remember where or exactly when it was, um, but there was um, a sort of medium-sized town that had a um, coliseum or you know a concert um, hall. Um, was having a Marilyn Manson concert. Oh, of all things. All right, mm. Marilyn Manson's a anti-Christian and, and just a not the, yeah, <laughs> not the sort of person that you probably want your kids listening to and that well um, so this this concert was coming to town and, and you know the local church just got wind of it and it, well what are we going to do about this concert this anti-Christian thing that's coming here so they could have you know picketed and said this is Satan and you know or, or whatever Right, but what they did instead is they made a whole bunch of sandwiches, and uh, and they got a bunch of like pop and bottled water and stuff like that, and they went to the parking lot, and they gave out food and drinks to the people that were coming to attend the concert, compliments of the church. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, so, That's so taping he, coals, burning coals on yeah, the enemy's yeah, head. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. He had to, instead of, you know, usually at his concerts, he's bashing the Christians and all this kind of stuff. He couldn't say anything <laughs> bad about them. <laughs> mm-hmm. In fact, he thanked mm-hmm. them. <laughs> <laughs> he probably had to leave a couple of songs out of the, <laughs> r- of the rapport that night, you know. Made him think a little bit, didn't <laughs> it? Uh, you know? I bet it did. Yeah. Oh, so they did some good. Showing love, you mm-hmm. know, instead of 
I don't know that guy was too, where his walk was as a kid. I mean, you know, he might have had something, just some horrible things happen to him that we don't know anything about, and he's not going to offer that. That really shaped him into having the thoughts he has about why he does it. You know, he sounded like, I I couldn't even listen to two seconds of his stuff, but just the stuff that I'd heard, I thought, maybe he really did. I mean, he could have had such a, a horrible upbringing, which, again, you can't blame it on any one person, but when somebody doesn't know anything except hurt and pain, you know, they want to lash yeah. back. Right, right. So, you yeah. know. And there's all kinds of examples throughout history. St. Paul's probably the most obvious example of somebody who's been very against Christianity, um, who's been, been turned around. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, there's there's plenty of examples. And, and talking about um, um, rock and roll musicians, um, Alice Cooper, um, who's very against Christianity and all that. Um, he now is a Christian. He has started up a, um, a, a organization to help young um, disadvantaged kids and, and, and stuff like that. And he's really he's completely turned. He still performs. He's got a radio show on one of the um, one of the syndicated you know, nationwide radio shows and stuff like that. Um, and it's not specifically a Christian radio show. But he's a Christian, and, and it's you know he's he's been very open and not and, and public about that fact, right? Um, all right. Well, if all you ever do is pick at him and, and you know tell him how horrible he is and stuff like that, that's never going to happen. Nobody's ever been saved by the mm -hmm. law, no matter how you know mm -hmm. people need to hear the law sometimes in order to um, to be ready to hear the gospel. Um, here comes that old saying, what would Jesus do? <laughs> you know, I guess that would be a better way to view things like that instead of being so jump of the gun and trying to right. be so defensive. Right. And, right. and, you know, and certainly there were plenty of times where Jesus confronted <coughs> people, all right, and, and said, you're wrong. But usually it was people would come at him and he would respond with wisdom and put them in their place. But there was only once that he was ever that he ever really started getting kind of harsh and nasty, and that was when he was when he the cleansed temple. the temple. And he was, he was, he was, rather he was mad. <laughs> okay. he was but in that yeah. case, it was for the sake of those who were being stepped on. He was he was doing that. He was mad because, hey, you're doing this to these people. You're messing up. Um, you're, you're making it so that they can't worship without distraction. You're taking advantage of these poor people and, and stuff. And, um, and and so he was, you know, he was looking out for them and, and said, how dare you treat these people that way. And um, so, yeah, you, <laughs> you want to make God mad. Start stomping on his people. <laughs> so, um, yeah, because he loves us. Right. Um, so, uh, stumbling. Yeah. Just. Yeah. You know, this is oh, one more thing with the stumbling thing, and that is um, the uh, the requirements for a pastor. Um, in First uh, Peter and First Timothy, um, and there's probably a couple more that I can't think of off the top of my head. Um, where he talks about you know, uh, uh, overseer, the term um, must be above reproach, husband of one wife, not uh, prone to um, uh, getting into fights and um, you know the apt to teach and, and things like that. And you know a lot of the stuff that um, that you see on mm -hmm. that list is um, you know, and especially this idea of what does it mean to be above reproach. Right. Well, it certainly doesn't mean you can't be a sinner, because then we wouldn't have any pastors. All right. But what it means is to not have any huge, gross public sins, and um, nothing that that would be damaging to their witness. Right. Now, you know, certainly, a, you know, a, a few speeding tickets, or um, or a, you know, I mean. We've all got our faults, 
my wife soon. and kids could give you a nice long list. <laughs> you know, <laughs> something a little heavy on the gas pedal from time to time. <laughs> 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 oh, oh yeah. But you know, I've 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 got my vices and, and my you know the things that I struggle with and, and that I strive to improve on. But um, but I'm faithful to my wife. You don't beat your children. I don't beat my children. <laughs> <laughs> you see, you tell the truth. <laughs> <laughs> I'll look at Kimberly. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we all have our, I mean, our you faults. Don't, yeah, right. You don't. You don't see me out. Um, you know, drinking um, in the bars. Drinking or in the bars. <laughs> you know, doing the Irish cheese. So I, I, yeah. yeah I, the I, I can't dance. afford to drink in a bar, but uh, you know. <laughs> That's expensive. Yeah. But, but you know, you you'll never if you call my house at any time, you, you won't I won't be drunk when I answer the phone. I'm my wife. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 <laughs> but uh, you know, so the reason for that is because um, of this this idea of stumbling. All right. Um, part of my job is to set an example. Mm-hmm. I don't, don't always do. I'll toast to that. It is kind of similar to like, a, you know, if you have a friend who's maybe, a, a, again, a recovering alcoholic, and I've got several of them, and if we decide to get together and go out for a meal or something, it, it's, again, you know, a lot of them will say, hey, if you want us to have a beer, Dave, go ahead. You know, it's no big deal. But it's like, you know what, out of respect for you, Hey, if this is something you have struggles with, why am I going to sit and rub your nose in it? Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's just as easy for me to sit and have a, a, a Coke with my pizza or a glass of iced tea than it is to, to have a beer. I mean, it's not a big thing. And if it helps you to deal with your struggle, you know, I mean, what kind of person, what kind of example would I be setting, or anybody for that matter, to do that? Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it's, it just wouldn't make any sense. You know, it's almost like that, you know, if you picture a couple of hippies at a county or something, yeah, I decided to give up pot, man. It's just too rough. Hey, if you, well, you want to come over, man, you know, we'll, man, hey, I know you don't want to hit it, but do you mind, man? I mean, it's just, you, know, you wouldn't be doing the guy any favor, so, you know, you'd be ended up having him lapse, but it's that sort of thing, though. Again, you would. You he really want to. pretty good. <laughs> did a good job. Well, hey, you know, I'm not going to sit there. We could be in a drama class. Been there, done that. Like that. <laughs> a lot of experience is a good teacher. There's no yeah, question. That's right. But but again, I think that big thing is is you're right. You know, I, I think what, regardless of what that is, you do you want to be able to let them know that they can feel open with you and talk to you about things and and just right. watch by your example. And, and you're right. You never know who, who's watching. You. So I mean, it's kind of the same thing. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, and, and if your life, you know, if you even if it's just a one-time slip, but it's such a huge slip. That it is gonna, it's gonna damage the reputation Sorry. of the church. It's gonna, you know, all right, um, you know, and we we see this. You know, the real obvious examples are of fact like the Jimmy Swagger and mm-hmm. Jim Baker, Jim Baker um, more recently Ted Haggard. Um, <laughs> a lot of these these mega church pastors that get so. You know, and I mean, honestly, I think with a lot of them, what happens is they're they're so wrapped up in in the church. They neglect their families, then their family life falls apart, and then they've got nowhere else to go, and then they—that's when they get into mm-hmm. trouble. Um, and uh, <coughs> I don't know if that's the case, you know, every time. Um, but when when somebody runs into um, such a, a huge uh, situation like that, then um, it's really hard to to sit there. Um, and listen to them preach and say, you hypocrite, you know. And yes, you can, if that person repents of that, you can forgive them, all right? But at the same time, um, it's, it's one thing to say, yes, we forgive you, but it's something else to say, um, you know, we, uh, you were you were drinking and you smashed the car, so um, here's the keys to the new car that we just bought. You know, um, 
forgiveness is one thing, trust is something else, right? And um, and so, like for instance, if uh, uh, um, at least I know that in the Missouri Synod, I don't know how other churches would, pastor um, divorces his wife, and and it's or he cheats on her, or um, you know, if, if otherwise. We have both. <laughs> <laughs> um, if, you know, in those situations, generally, that's that's it, and and you're gonna have a pretty hard time um, continuing on. Mm-hmm. And Do they throw you out? Yeah, Usually. apparently not now quick see. enough. <laughs> now wait a minute. You know, I, the the trouble with that though, you know, like nobody would care if Greg and I got divorced. Well, maybe the kids would. <laughs> But well, yeah, my care. kids freaked out. Like oh, I thank you, Anna Marie. I appreciate that. I never expected a pastor to be perfect because I realized they're just human. Everybody yeah. makes mistakes, but their mistakes do so much damage mm-hmm. to the congregation. Yeah, and to me, that is very difficult to forgive. Right. Because in the instances we had, we lost half of the congregation mm-hmm. not once but twice. Twice. And you know, and that's the thing. It's because that hurt goes so deep. It, it it hurts everybody because the church is a family, all right? Right. And and you think about you think about how when a when a couple gets divorced, it hurts the kids, all right? Well, when the shepherd mm-hmm. gets divorced, yeah, hurts the sheep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. And then it's kind of hard to accept a counselor who can't fix their own problems right. Physician heal yeah. mm-hmm. or uses yeah. the pulpit to badmouth the spouse. <laughs> oh, that's particularly bad. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. yeah. Wow. Wow. Mm-hmm. wow. So that's what made people uncomfortable. Yeah. Wow. You know. Um, yeah, that's just... Huh. So... <laughs> Uh, let's move on. Yeah, people make mistakes. You know, I mean, I just, you know, I feel the same way about uh, Catholic priests um, who seem to have um, issues. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think what upsets me the most about it is um, so many people I knew that, and I knew for that nine years that I went to the grade schools with who were altar boys. And I've got to wonder because you saw changes in them. Hmm. But we didn't know anything about that, you right. know. And if that would have, and it just that makes me so angry because not only did you destroy a child's innocence, but you took away their faith in God. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because of who you are, and to me, that is that's hard. where the millstone gets tied around. You know, and then to <laughs> just pawn them off at other congregations and mm-hmm. let them do it all over again. I mean, yeah, and, and how, how do you fix that? That goes very deep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, how do you fix that? that? that, you know, and really that's kind of an extreme example that was insanely common somehow, but, right? But at the same time, any time that a pastor makes such a huge um, transgression that's so public and, and, and damaging, Right, it's going to destroy mm. people's faith. Yeah, it will. <coughs> and um, and it shouldn't. Okay. But yeah. But it, it will. But it does. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and not only that, it also gives people license to sin. Well, he even the pastor <laughs> does it. Yeah. So you know what's you know, why why shouldn't I if 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 he you know. Not that we're given some sort of special, you know, kind of hunt, you know yeah. sort of lay on hands, and and now all of a sudden I'm, you know, Superman. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't sin anymore. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that would make it easier, wouldn't it? Oh, it sure <laughs> but uh, you know, at the same time, I, you know, I sometimes think, you know, God, why did you choose sinners as pastors instead of angels who are perfect? You know, and and I firmly believe that the reason for that. Is because boy, I can tell you all about forgiveness. <laughs> yeah. First hand, yeah. You know, <laughs> angels are not given the gospel to proclaim because they can tell you the objective fact. 
but they can't tell you from experience what forgiveness is like because they don't need forgiveness. Right? I can tell you how great God is because He's forgiven me. <laughs> Even you. Even how many me? times, Pastor? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't ever count. No, no. Me you know, and and that's that's the beauty of it, and that's what God has given, and not just pastors, but Christians. You know, so the mm-hmm. priesthood of all believers. Yes. The, that he has shown us that love and so that we can go out <coughs> and say um, you know, let me tell you about this guy that saved me and let me tell you how great he is mm. and, and how much more powerful of a message that is that we can tell you from experience you know if <laughs> if, I, if I were mm. if I were all I did was you know I preach about yeah God forgives you and, and and, um, you know, and, and, but it, it doesn't apply to me too, and, and I don't need that forgiveness. That'd be a pretty empty message. Yeah. And, um, you know, because that'd be, well, it's easy for you to say. And, um, you know, well, so what, uh, you, you, can, you can talk it, but it's, it's, not, it's not real for you. And, yeah. But that's the amazing thing is, Real. It's real for me. He's forgiven me. I, I, you know, messed up so many times. And, you know, and he does. He forgives me over and over, and and, and he's, he still loves me. And man, that's just amazing. I gotta tell you about this, <laughs> you know. And you know, it's it, it's the um, like when a when a couple gets in great illustration. That when a couple gets um, gets engaged. The um the when the um the woman gets the the ring, she doesn't have to take a class from the jeweler on how to tell people about <laughs> the, that she's engaged <laughs> and about this this one that loves her so much and has committed himself to her. Well, so it is with Christians that um you know we're we got we're married to the bridegroom, you know, and um. And he loves us, and he's committed to us, and and you know, <laughs> he said, "Till death do us part." After he rose from the dead, never to die again. And um, you know, that's the love that he has for us. And you know, and so I can I can tell you, you should go out and tell people about Jesus, right? But but really, if you're doing it because you feel that you have to, then you're kind of missing the point. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing with, you know, with uh, helping the poor or putting money in the plate, in the offering plate, or, or, or whatever. You know, that it's we don't do it out of compulsion. God loves a cheerful giver, and and you can't force yourself to be cheerful. But if it's if you don't feel cheerful about what God has done for you, then get back in the Bible and read some more, and and, and so that you understand better what He's done. For because the, um, the more you understand that, the more you're going to say, how can I not do these things? Mm-hmm. And um, not, not because I have to, because why wouldn't I? Mm-hmm. I mean, because of your faith, you want to do those <coughs> things. You want to show your love. Yeah. He works in us. And it's, and it's so that. exciting you know, to be able to, I'm, I'm <coughs> still on a high from this weekend. Oh, my legs are crazy. <laughs> legs. My Did legs you say your legs? <laughs> my legs from canvassing. Oh, oh. How was I was going to say. I told what him. Are you a heavy duty dancer? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? I told him it's from being out of shape. <laughs> yeah, well, that was kind of you, Anna Marie. <laughs> <laughs> hey. No, it's, it's, it's true. You know, your mother would tell you to wear your good shoes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I told Teresa, I said, I really need to get, you know, since this OAFC team is getting started up in that, and they, you know, they really want to do monthly stuff, and um, like to be able to go along with them, um, obviously not Sunday morning, but, um, <laughs> but, you know, the rest of the weekend, and, and work with them and stuff, and um, I said, boy, if I'm going to be canvassing like this on a fairly regular basis, I gotta get on the treadmill more often. <laughs> 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 huh? You gotta get the treadmill more 
Oh, it is. I know where the. I know where it is. <laughs> <laughs> she knows where it is. <laughs> I know where mine is too. Yeah. <laughs> I sold mine. <laughs> I know where my exercise I'm bike like, I is. I promise. Too. I promise. Ten years later, how many miles on that thing? Oh, two. <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason that resale places won't usually take exercise equipment. Yeah. Because yeah. if they did, that's all they'd have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's too funny. Let's close this first. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love. So often we stumble, and, and there are times that we cause other people to stumble, and, and we're not proud of that. And, and we wish that we could go back and change that and, um, and, and change what we do, but, um, but we can't. The, the past is, is already done, and it's already happened, and, and we can't change it, but, um, but you still forgive us. You have... As, as far as as far as you're concerned, it's it's been changed uh, by the blood of Christ, and, and it's all been wiped away, and, and you've made us a new creation and given us a fresh start, and, and you each day because we are your baptized children, each day is a new day in your love, a new day to serve you and glorify you and rejoice in, in your forgiveness and, and your peace. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. When when I told Greg when he asked me what I wanted for my birthday the one year and I said 